start. I can't start by welcoming you all to this reconvened meeting of the Coordinating Committee. Um, I'll start with taking apologies for absence. proceedings now by asking Councillor Stuart Kelly, who's the lead signatory to the call-in, um, to come forward and explain what his reasons are for calling in, in the decision, and he'll have five minutes to do that, and I'll be very strict, Stuart. Uh, equally strict with Councillor Davis, who'll come after you, who is the Cabinet lead with responsibility for financial decisions, and he also will have five minutes. Following on from that, we'll have the witnesses called, um, and I'll explain how we're going to do that when we get to that point, but um, Stuart would like to come forward. Uh, uh, thanks, Chair. I'll, uh, I'll just go through the issues. Clearly, uh, I've called in a fairly weighty report, but we're good enough to point out that uh, I was only really referring to uh, issues of the public health budgets are concerned, which is referenced on page 15 of the Cabinet's uh, recommendation. Um, sorry, page 21 uh, of the Cabinet's recommendation to 
accepting changes to contract uh, budgets. The actual detail is given on page 25 of your um, uh, of your pack of some of the uh, changes. Uh, obviously, when I saw the decision. I um, I saw further information, and, and, and that's what uh, I want to hand present to the committee now. Uh, when I was asked about witnesses and things like that, I, I guess I, I, I thought uh, in my own mind that, that this was a grant given by the council to other parts of the council. And the correspondence that I've had was with the lead council officers that were responsible for the projects that I was concerned with, which is why it, it sets up what came down as two people likely to give factual information. Uh, just because they also appear in Gallagher's witnesses for the Cabinet, I'm confident that uh, factual information is what the committee wants and will get, regardless of whether it's in an adversarial or an information uh, background. A guest chair could have also asked the school teacher to call to extol the virtues of forest schools, could have asked a tenant to call and extol the virtues of healthy homes. But chair, I've taken that while it was read from the members, indeed the Cabinet member for uh, Russia Sports and Culture in her report to uh, Council in July, uh, reported on the success of their uh, five schools. Uh, she said that the literacy of one child group was raised by three points in 10 weeks, and the five schools form a, uh, for, uh, for, uh, mainly five schools are part of the intervention method methodology in schools and seeing positive effects. That was accepted by the Council. Uh, by all members, I'm sure we agree. In terms of healthy homes, Councillor George Davis in his report uh, also uh, referred to, uh, to, to uh, his project, Healthy Homes. Uh, he said that uh, the Housing Standards team was successful in securing uh, funding for the project and it's helping to reduce health inequalities uh, because it seeks to secure better outcomes for vulnerable residents in poor housing by ensuring the hazards in the home that contribute to poor health or reduce. Altogether. I think we all sign up to the to what it is uh, to what's there. So I didn't want to waste the committee's time by, by, by just ticking the boxes and say we support the concepts. I, th I think we do, even with the reductions that are being um, are being planned. Um, I asked Chair about the um, about the impact. Um, and I asked the Executive Director uh, Kevin Adley uh, who will also be addressing this. Uh, I was advised in in as far as Healthy Homes was concerned. But whilst there will be a reduction in outputs, uh, specifically funded from the public health fund, uh, any vulnerable households would uh, be diverted to the council's existing capital program. That's fair enough uh, as, as an initial response, but of course if more people access the, the uh, mainstream capital program funding, then other people won't have access to that. So I pressed the director on healthy homes um, to ask what the impact was. Um, and I can read the response that we got from uh, Lisa Newman uh, on that. She says to me, if, if home repairs assistant loans were only required, then the likely reduction in the number of households who would be able to access a loan, if this was considered necessary, would be nine. If it was the cosy homes elements of the happy homes, then the number of households would be 14. Um, she goes on to say, uh, however, this is, uh, th these figures are based on uh, the maximum grants available, but in reality, we don't give the maximum. We don't need necessarily to give the maximum grants. So, if the average that we've discovered over the uh, over the uh, period of the project was sustained, then that would result in a reduction of sales to 21 um, households. Now, I know the, the, the first reaction, possibly from committee, so far as healthy homes is concerned, will be to ask, well, you know, these these reductions are, are taking place uh, to uh, to meet. Uh, the fluctuations that have taken place in, in the current budget. Uh, what are you going to do about it? And I'll say so far as healthy homes is, is concerned, but if one looks at page 25, some of the health outcomes fund was capitalised. That, that was part of the health outcomes fund that capitalised wool. For example, the fitness streets at the Scaring Health Course, Giddy Gap uh, football switches, and a number of other things, were able to be uh, picked up by the capital program, increasing the capital program's funding. And therefore, forward and were capitalised. Healthy Homes <coughs> is already a capital uh, program um, uh, uh, line, uh, and my view was that uh, why couldn't we also seek to capitalise uh, the, uh, the, the revenue uh, reduction we were making to that grant? Moving straight into that, I appreciate that we've got five minutes and I'm trying to cover uh, two, um, uh, two projects. 
Moving to the um, uh, Cloud Schools uh, aspect. Another aspect. Moving to the Cloud Schools uh, aspect. Again, the reduction there is, um, it, it is 35 pounds. And I request Mary Worrell as to the uh, as to where that money was coming from. I appreciate that Mary will probably say to you that some of the management and administration of the scheme will contribute to those costs. My concern, and I pressed further, was the impact on those schools that were due to take part, and that this is the impact. Rather than allocating three members of staff to the public health uh, outcome form for subsidised sessions, as was originally intended, to allow a class of 30 children to take part, we are now asking schools to select 15 children from the class or year group. In addition, early years provision that was originally expected to be four funding events has been changed to two events. <coughs> the way I'm coming towards this one is to say, look, this started in April, these two schools were given in April. Schools have obviously got themselves into some sort of queue to take part in the event. Those who have taken part early in the program will have been able to send 30 children. We wouldn't have had to pick them all the rest. Those that are later, halfway through the program, will now have to go through some sort of picking process. In effect, halving the number of early years children that can take part in the process. For me, that was a matter of fairness uh, more than anything else. Uh, Chair, just to conclude in hopefully the 15 seconds I, I have left, I've touched on, on what I was looking for, maybe out of committee uh, or the cabinet of Health Healthy Homes is concerned. It's possible to capitalise, in my view, to, uh, to allow the extra 21 uh, interventions to take place. In terms of forest schools, I'm happy to take any efficiency saving that we've there. The committee might wish to press the director and the cabinet member as to what that figure actually is so they can understand what it is we're asking to go back into the budget so that the schools that are taking part later in the forest schools uh, uh, initiative uh, enjoy the same, if you like, terms and conditions as the, as the schools that participated earlier. In that thing, and that we don't uh, have that reduction in that classes of 30 to 50 uh, in, in children who are able to access it in the second half of the year. Chair, thank you for your time. Well, time. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, no, no you go back to your place now, Stuart, and I'll ask Phil Davis, who's the leader of the council and the cabinet member for responsibility for financial matters from board, and you also, Phil, will be strictly monitored to five minutes. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Chair. Um, my um, my response to the, the call in is as follows. Um, I mean, clearly, the, the, uh, the projects that we're talking about tonight, um, I think it's just important to uh, remind the committee that these were time-limited projects as a result of an underspending the public health budget identified in 2013. Um, to be spent over two financial years, 13, 14, 14, 15, um, and must have public health outcomes. I think that was a key criteria. Um, what happened, uh, as uh, we'll go into the detail of how the projects were selected, but there was a, a selection um, process. Um, after the successful projects were agreed, there was then a, a stock take uh, exercise where um, a review was, was effectively done of all the projects that were funded, uh, given the original funding, uh, to see whether they still needed that money. And that was in the context, Chair, of us as an authority uh, having to make um, significant savings as a result of central government cuts. Um, so we had to do that exercise. We had to leave no stone unturned in terms of looking at all budgets. Um, in terms of the, um, the, the list of projects in the cabinet, the, the report went to cabinet in July, um, a number of them were laid off the blocks, therefore couldn't spend the whole allocation. A number of them um, were being rephased for kind of operational reasons. A number of them were being delivered by alternative budgets in an alternative way. So there was a stock take done um, of these projects. In, in terms of the two um, that um, uh, Stuart has, has focused on. Um, in terms of first of all taking the forest schools, um, the, the, the headline kind of target was to um, to have 660 children participate in this program over that two year period. Um, that target was exceeded fairly early on in the, in the lifetime of this project to 
system, and my understanding is um, at the end of year one, um, over 700 children have gone through the program. So a very successful program, had exceeded the original target. Um, and therefore, I think there was a, a good argument for saying, because it started late, because it already well exceeded its target, does it, does it need its full allocation? Or could that money be, um, be, be saved and contribute to our overall uh, savings challenge? I don't, uh, um, I don't accept the argument that the, um, the children per class being reduced from 30 to 15 was because of the funding reduction. My understanding was that the experience showed that, that smaller groups got a lot more out of the project, groups of 15, uh, than groups of 30. And that was why the, uh, the, that, that reduction was made. It was for, um, for reasons for benefiting the children on, on the program. Um, so I, I, I do not accept the argument that, 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 the, that um, the, the overall, uh, the original objectives of that, this project was affected by the, uh, by the savings that were, were agreed by Cabinet in July. With regard to healthy homes, again, um, my understanding is even with the budget reduction, they are well on the way to, to um, uh, achieving the overall target, which was 220 healthy home visits, stroke assessments, and up to 16 loan projects. And I think in, in the case of this project, um, the, uh, the department uh, had a, a successful bid for capital funding agreed um, during the halfway through the program of some 289,000, which enabled them to fill in the gap that had been caused by the budget reduction and, um, and effectively deliver all of the outputs that were originally envisaged. Um, my, my contention is, Chair, that on both the Healthy Homes Project and the uh, Forest Schools Project, I think it, this is prudent financial management, frankly. I do, do not accept that this has um, meant um, that anybody has, has, has lost out. And I have real, um, uh, I have real concerns that even if, uh, I think Stu is asking for the original budget to be restored, I am not confident that either of these projects could actually have the capacity to deliver more if, we, if, if this money was restored to its original budget. Um, I don't think it's necessary, and I think uh, it was a sensible decision that Cabinet took in the light of um, all of that information. So um, my um, request really would be that you would confirm the, um, the, the uh, decision of Cabinet on the in July of this year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now, we'll move on to the part of the meeting now where we can call the witnesses. Now, um, as Stuart did indicate, both Phil and Stuart have called two people as witnesses, both expert witnesses opposite the council. I don't intend to call them up twice and send them back again. So if we could start with Mary Worrell, and I'll ask the committee if they have questions to ask of Mary Worrell, um, then we speak now during this process. And Mary, perhaps I could start off by saying, first of all, can you tell us what your role is, and can you describe the Forest School project for me? Certainly. Um, my role is senior manager for Parks and Countryside, uh, starting in November. Um, the purpose of the Forest School Committee fund, Public Council Funding Project was to um, pilot the concept of forest schools um, within the Parks and Social Service. There was uh, several members of the staff who had previous experience of forest schools who believed that it would be a beneficial addition to opportunities available to children in the schools. and in the first 
has already been described, 727 children benefited from the activity. The learning from the first year was that although the schools have an aspiration to hold classes to take part in things, actually where the benefit was coming for children was um, on the quite sort of one-to-one -one type level. Um, and that 15 was really the, the maximum optimum size for a group. If individual children would have benefited as much as they could do from this intervention. The public health funding um, came through its review process and the question was asked, did we need the money at all? The view was, yes, this was a worthy project, had to provide benefits. Um, when we received the reduction in money, basically in the first year there was an 18k funder spend, and in the second year that same 18k work has been taken off the original aspiration. So we still have 35,000 pounds, which is very helpful and is helping to get the scheme going. One of the things which I think isn't really understood perhaps about the scheme is right from the start the idea was that the staff time that was having to be used forest school would be um, backfilled through use of the funding so that the other caring sites activities that rangers do would, would carry on whilst the experienced rangers got involved in forest schools. Fantastic for exceeding your target by the end of year one. 